say it's good to be in God's house tonight. Before we get started, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. We need to remember all the requests that's been made. Remember Allison and Joe, Zoe and others that's going on a mission trip here soon. That they could just go rejoicing and spreading God's word to those people. Now, I thought a lot about what Allison said and Joe, Zoe said the other day that a lot of them might not understand the word that they say, but their actions and what they're there for could mean the difference between heaven and hell for those people. We need to pray strong for those tonight. Does anybody else have any requests that needs to be made tonight? Let's remember this. I'd also ask you to remember my brother. He's going to Vanderbilt the 24th of this month to see a lung specialist to try to figure out what's going on. He needs your prayers. And also I had a neighbor, Monday night I think it was, had an accident on a four-wheeler. And I asked you to remember him. in the first chapter book of Jonah the first chapter the first verse says now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of an Ammonite saying arise and go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness has come, has come before me but Jonah arose Flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa, and he found a ship, a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down to it, to go with him into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word tonight. As I begin to pray about this, and God showed me, gave me a thought, and the thought is go. You know, when God speaks to us, we need to go. A lot of times, we'll, God will tell us to do something. We're busy doing other things. We won't go. You now, God said, when God told Jonah, he said for him to, to get up and to go down, to, down there and to preach his word. He said, uh, God's call to Jonah. He told him to go. And that's what we need to do so many times in our lives. As I said, we have other, so much going on in our lives nowadays. We're always busy doing something, and we'll put God off. In church, we need to put God first. And what we're, when he asks us to do something and tells us to do something, we need to go ahead and do it. Not after a while, not tomorrow. And I was thinking that today as I was studying, a lot of times our kids, when they were growing up, we'd tell them to go do something. 
they say, well, can we do this? Well, if you'll get this done, then we'll go do something else. Jonah, God didn't tell, give Jonah an option. God said to go. And that's what we need to do when God tells us to do something. We need to get up and go. As, and it says there that Jonah, he, he didn't want to go. He went and he joined him. He got on him a ship and he thought, I'm going to run from this. I, I just don't have to do this. You know, how many times have we run from God and says, I've got other things to do, God. I, not right now. I ain't got time to go do this. It might just be a simple thing to go to your neighbor and say, do you need something today? It might be just to get up out of your seat and go across the aisle and tell somebody you love them and thankful that they're here. But, you know, we, do, we, make it, we put ourselves first and we don't do what God wants us to do. God, Jonah ran, but he couldn't hide from God. There's no hiding place from God. We can run, and I've done it myself. I've run from God for se several times in my life, and, but God's never left me. God's always left that impression on my heart and telling me, when I tell you to do something, just go do it. But Jonah here, he thought, I'll just go, and I'll get away from this. And it said that he went down, and he got on his ship, and they, they went out to sea, and they started on their journey there, and the, all of a sudden there was this mighty storm come up on them. The ship began to toss to and fro. They didn't know what to do. They couldn't control it. And they began to ask everybody on the ship, what's going on? What's causing this? Old, where was old Jonah? He was down in the belly of the ship, sound asleep, not a care in the world. He, he did, as, so he thought. But you see, they got up and they began to question everybody. The, said the shipmaster went down and he said, well, he grabbed him and shook him and said, what's going on, Jonah? Wake up here and tell us what the problem is. Jonah began to tell them what's going on. He said he had run from God. And they began to worry about it. And they, they said, well, what are we going to do about this now? You're on here and the ship's going every which way. We can't control it. What are we going to do? Old Jonah thought, well, I've got this and figured out. He said, you just throw me overboard and the, sh and the, the sea will swallow me up and that will be the end of it. And the, and the sea will calm down. Well, that's what they done. They threw him over. And right then the ship, the seas calmed. The storm calmed. Old Jonah thought probably that's the end of this. But it says there that God made this great fish. And this, and I begin to think about that as the, how big that fish could have been. You know, I think about and I see you see pictures and movies on TV when people are bitten by sharks, they're chewed up. But old Jonah, he was he was swallowed. He wasn't chewed up. He wasn't harmed in no way, shape, or form. But he was down into the belly of this fish. For three days, he was in the belly of this fish. Old Jonah get, began to think, and he thought, well, what have I done now? What am I going to do now? I'm not hurt. What am I going to do? It says that Jonah, he, he began to pray. In chapter 2, it says, And Jonah prayed unto the Lord God out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of my own affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of, the, out of the belly of hell, cried I. And now, and now heardest my voice. Now when we get to that point in our life and we think we've got it all under control. And we think, I don't need nothing or I don't need nobody. I can do it. That's when we get ourselves in trouble. Old Jonah, he got himself in trouble here by running from God. You know, you can play hide, as growing up as little boy, as boys, we played hide and seek. You could go hide and somebody would find you after a while. But old Jonah, he couldn't hide from the Lord. He was down in the belly of that fish. God knew where he was, but God still had a plan for him. God was going to get his attention one way or another. And old Jonah, he was down there three days. He decided, and then he figured out what was going on. And he prayed, and God heard his voice. It says in and then in chapter, the 10th verse in chapter 2, it said, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon dry land. Now Jonah, Jonah had no heart, harm about him, no way. Now when God speaks to us, we need to do what God wants us to do. God, has, God hears our cries. When we get to that lowest point in our life, and we've done all that we can do, and we think that we've got it under control. That's when we realize we're really in trouble. God has the answers to our problems tonight. If we'll only look to him, God has the answers. No matter how big or how small that problem is, God has an answer for it. It said, it said that Jonah, the fish vomited him out. And then in chapter 3, in the first verse, it said, 
And the, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, Arise and go. Now God had to tell him the second time. How many times has God had to tell you to go do something? He's had to tell me several times to go do something. Oh, Jimmy thinks I just don't have time. Church, that's where we're at today. When God speaks, we need to listen. One time's enough. You know, Mom and Dad, they'd, growing up as a little boy, sometimes Mom would tell us to do something. We wouldn't do it. Mom looked look at me and said, Boy, I done told you once. That's enough. And that's the way it is with God. God will get your attention. He'll say, One time's enough. As the, the, price, the price is worth get, is not worth getting out of the out of the presence or the will of God. There's no satisfaction, there's no protection, and there's no peace outside of God's will. You know, we'll worry ourselves to death when we get out of God's will. We'll run and try to figure it all out on our own. But God is in control. You know, I've, I've never seen God. But God, I know he's there. I can feel him within my heart each and every day. I know he's there to protect us. I was listening to uh, Billy Graham the other night. And he told a story of a young lady. She's 18 years old, and she got her pilot's license. She set out on a journey to go cross-country in her plane. About halfway through, she ran into a major storm. Her instrument panel, for some reason, malfunctioned. She had no idea where she was at. She got on the radio and she started calling for help. Several times she called. The third time she called, a man came across the radio. He said, I can hear you. She says, I don't know where I'm at. I can't see nothing. I'm in a storm. I have no earthly idea where I'm at, what to do. He looked, he was on, come back on the radio and he said, just be still, be calm, and be patient. And I'll get you down down into safety. Now, when they, when we get in that shape in our life, we need to look to God. He's got He's in control. He can get us to safety. And this man talked her down, and she'd never seen him. Now that's the way we are with God. I've never seen him, but I know God's there. Now we need to listen for God's voice tonight. I know the message has been short and scattered, but you know when God says, "God give me the message," and God says, "That's all I." All I need to sit down because I'll make a mess out of it. So if you'll get your song, that's all I've got.
John Ray. <laughs> he didn't learn his lessons well at all, did he? He sounded just like me. You know, he complained about the plant dying, he complained about everything, but God stuck with him. And I'm thankful for that. Mark, will you dismiss us in prayer? As a father of mine, the Lord, we met the good prayer tonight. Lord, we pray for the church, Lord. And Lord, we know that you can do all things. And there's no doubt that the Bible says that you prepare the fish, take care of the Lord, or whatever the Lord will. John, we, uh, we know, Lord, that that's possible. Lord, we ask that you give us the sins of trespass and that you be with us.
<laughs> before Ray took the church um, and didn't have a dance. But I know there's somebody that maybe used to go there a long time ago. Yeah. Well, that went to an Elvis church at some point. Anyway, she came back to lead our dance. But she's gone. <laughs> So he had asked me, he said, I have to ask you, he said, would you come and play the piano for the kids at our Bible school? He said, they just feel like it's they need to have someone come in there. And I said, yes, I don't think you're whatever. You don't have to stay or whatever. So I went, and uh, I mean, of course, they're not using literature or anything. And, and I, have, I have really just grown so just it, I've learned so much from them in this in this it's hard situation because I mean you know they didn't have no literature which was it was fine but like they went so back to basic that it made me realize we've gotten so far from the basics. Yeah. I mean you know they're doing the pledge singing my country tis a thing they're doing the Christian flag singing all the Christian soldiers they're doing the pledge of the Bible and singing the B I B L A literally. And in in that first night, I think they had probably thirty total, and that and some of that, and it was probably half, if not a little more, might have been adults. And I sat there and I thought, you know, <laughs> if I just come to this church, so you just have to do about one night. Yeah, that's it. You know, maybe we need to feel first. Maybe we need to get our attendance up before we go. You know, that's such a lot of work and a lot of commitment. You know, for just some kids. And I thought, if they just thought, you know, it don't matter. And they were going to do it. They were going to do it. And they did it. And I went tonight. Well, you know, tonight, we never know. But tonight I went. And there was like, there's been a few more every night. But like tonight, I pulled the work on. And I'm like, I have You know, literally. Oh, man. And I, I told Mom, I said, I just, I guess we will put you in situations for a reason. But I said, I just thought, you know, they've really been an inspiration because they had every reason in the world to not do Bible school. And nobody would have thought of anything about it. But they, I guess they thought they had to start somewhere. And, you know, the guy doing their Bible school, he had never really done it before. And, you know, that first night, they just told me, you know, what happened to play. They didn't say nothing about leaving me tonight. So I just play them like they told me to. And nobody saw it. You know, whatever. I just kept doing my thing. And then after it was over with, he said, and he said, I'll have somebody lead in the song tonight. So well, she, um, Linda told me that night, and she said, April, you better just lead in the song. She said, yeah, I'll lead in the song. And so I, I have more thought, but it's just the, you know, they, they get worried that it ain't for the kids. You know, if they struggle for what to do next, I mean, half the time the guy's looking at his wife waiting for her to tell him what he needs to do next. I mean, but it is just to thought, you know, yeah. It's all it's on Tassel Pie. Yeah. Uh, Turn off the Tassel Pie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ed, you know where Eddie Perry's little building is over there? You've been over there a while. Okay. You don't really know about that. 